What if your IDE was built for React? I don't just mean syntax highlighting. I mean, from the ground up, your entire development environment was built thinking about what you need as a React developer every day. Today, Codex is working with the channel and sponsoring this video so I can show you this super exciting new editor. I'm genuinely really hyped about what they're building here. I think y'all are gonna love it too. So what is Codex? To put it simply, Codex is a graphical editor focused on helping you work in your React applications. Yes, your existing React applications. One of the things that makes Codex so special is that they actually understand what we're doing in React every day. Things like Git functionality built straight in. Things like the ability to use your type definitions for your components and have access to those variables inside of Codex. You can use prop types too, but it supports TypeScript. As long as your components are typed, you're good to go. The ability to customize your styles, drag and drop things around. A lot of the stuff that we're doing every day in React, Codex understands. So enough talk, let's take a look. So you'll immediately see we have tons of different components and all of these are from a real code base. You can even click the file tab here and see the source code, just like in VS Code. You got your package JSON, you got your source directory with all of your application logic. This was using Create React App. Uh, don't, don't be too mean to them for that. It's still super nice to see that your code is in here. The editor is actually using the same editor as VS Code, the Monaco JS system. So it's super simple to access things, go deep into like a sub component. And if it's importing something that we're using in here, you can go to definition, all the usual like navigation, your code base here, this gift card component, you can see has a gift card props that are defined here. You don't have to define it there. You can even yoink, yoink, kill and be good. It totally is accepting of any style of typing of components. As long as your component has an input type, you'll have access to that in their graphical editor. What do I mean the graphical editor? Well, that's where stuff gets real interesting. If we hop here and we go back to the stuff that I was touching, which is in the gift card component, you can go in here. We have all of the element hierarchy. So this is the actual components being rendered by React. This is a board. In Codex, a board is a component that you mounted in one of their special board.ts files. So if we go to the code again real quick, you'll see that we're currently in the source components directory. There's also an underscore codex directory where the boards can be set up and accessed for each thing in your code base. Generally, what I've, the pattern I've seen is the, the boards folder pretty directly mirrors the components folder. It doesn't really matter though. It's just how you choose to import and export things. So here we're importing the gift card component. We're actually mounting it with uh, or in a grid with a specific style to it already so that we don't have to make the component specific for this view because we want the component to flex and do all the different things based on what view you're in. And we picked a specific one here. You can even specify properties for the environment, like how big it should be when it opens up in there. You can set different custom colors and a lot of other cool things to make the actual editing experience in the editor way better. Once you have a board created, Codex is smart enough to add that to the home page as we saw before. And we can show this gift card. And in here, you can click any element and immediately see on the side here, all of the details for this. So this gift card you can actually check this on and off and see the effect on this specific component. And when you make that change, that's actually going to change the code here. So this isn't doing some weird runtime stuff. Every change you make in Codex is directly mirrored in code. Super cool. So you can check on and off and see immediately that these code changes are made to your code base. Things get really fun when you start moving stuff around. So we want to add an element though. We can click add here, pick a basic element from like traditional stuff as well as any local components we have. So if I wanted to add a landing page into my card, which is kind of the opposite of what I want to do. But if you want to do that, you can do that right here. We'll add something more basic though. Let's add, hmm. let's add an H2. Click H2, drag, and drop. Cool. Tell it to be a child of that. I want it to be a child of this. 
Can I change the order though? Yeah, you can. Super cool. And now I have this heading too that's actually there in code in the component. So here we're not going to see because this is the board, but if I right click, go to definition, then in here we can now see this new H2 tag. You know it's a new one because it's not using the capital H1 that this code base uses because these are all coming from Blueprint.js. If you have a component library that you've already built at your company, like you have custom buttons, you have custom like backgrounds, custom loading screens, custom image components, custom video players, all those types of things that are defined as a component library, you'll now have access to all of those here and the ability to drag and drop them into your new components and into your designs, which is where a lot of the real magic comes in here is this is a super accessible solution for non-developers, for designers, people new to code, anybody who might not have familiarity with a code base but want to play around in it and move things around and try to understand it better. A lot of what's super cool here with the ability to hover over an element and just drag and drop it in this uh, tree view to and from different places in your code base makes coding way more accessible to people who might not have been able to do this before. This is probably the real magic more than anything else is how accessible tools like Codex can make your code base to people who aren't familiar with code yet or aren't familiar with the way that we do code just yet. If you have a designer on your team that spends a lot of time in Figma and they want to play around with the code base a little bit more, this is a really good way to get them started. Highly recommend it. Things get really cool when you want to start styling. Sadly, they don't support Tailwind yet. Let them know in the comments. They should hopefully get to it soon. But any other properties you would want to change about any element. So in here, if we wanted to play with the styles, you can hit manage classes, see all of the classes it does and doesn't have, and add classes to and from it. More importantly, though, I can actually play with the styles here. If I go here, we can see all of the styles that are being computed. We can modify and add to these. Oh yeah, we can create a class from here. So I can create a new class. You can actually pick which style file it goes to. They fully support CSS modules. So as long as you're using one of those solutions, you're good to go. I can click here, gift card board or gift card module CSS for the actual CSS module. We'll give this new, or we'll call this custom description. Now we've given that a name. And now we have this custom description uh, class, I'm able to customize it a bunch. I can change the position of things within it. You can see the effect immediately. I can change the self alignment. If this is a thing that has children, and that's a flex box. I can play with the font, both the size as well as the family. So you actually have access to variables if you have those defined in your code base already. You can also change the text weight directly here. Make this really bold if we want to. Generally speaking, the, the magic here is you have a graphical editor not far off from something like you'd see with Figma built directly into your editor. Magic stuff. Super cool to have this level of power and customization for any CSS, SCSS modules, or CSS modules. Really excited for the tail end support though. Okay, so we've made all these changes. How do we actually do something with them? Well, this is where one of my favorite parts comes in their understanding of Git. If you look in the corner up here, you'll see this little commit button that I can click. And when you click this button, you have the option to review your changes, name a commit. If you're not on a branch, or if you're on a branch that's protected, it will actually encourage you to make a new branch. I already have a branch, funny enough, name new branch. But you can create branches and make pull requests all from within here. We'll just call this uh, update styling for description commit. And as we see, you can even look at the commit here, it has the hash, so if I want to go do something with it, I can. All of these code changes were made as actual code changes. Super cool. And if other people in the repo have branches and you want to see one that they're working on, you have the ability to just click here to switch branches. It will reinstall, run the install commands if it needs to, or if you choose for it to or not to. And now you can hop between branches trivially. This is probably one of my favorite features, the ability to use branches as a graphical experience to work on and modify a code base. Super cool stuff. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you a ton. I am genuinely really excited about what Codex is doing here. I don't take sponsors if I don't have genuine excitement for what they're working on. 
And it's clear that Codex understands us, what we need, and what we're building. If you like this, please let us know in the comments. If you stuck around this long, you're probably already subscribed, but if for some reason you're not, please do check the button, make sure it's not white, it doesn't say subscribe, because that means you're not. And also, YouTube thinks you're gonna like the video in the corner here, so give that a play maybe. You might be surprised by it. YouTube's algorithm's pretty good nowadays. Thank you as always. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace, nerds.